three. Hi, I'm Cindy Mascone, Editor-in-Chief of Chemical Engineering Progress Magazine. We're here today at AICHE's 2010 Annual Meeting in Salt Lake City, and we are about to go into the Water and Energy Plenary Session, Water, Energy and Water, Sustainability for a Smart Planet. Here with me are two of the session speakers, Spike Narayan, Functional Manager, Science and Technology at IBM Research, and David Klineski, Global R&D Director at Dow Water and Process Solutions. I'd like to start with David first. David, could you tell us a little bit about how water treatment technologies play into the energy water nexus? That's a great question. Um, if you look at water treatment technologies that are out there today, whether it's reverse osmosis or, or your traditional uh, type of uh, treatment technologies, they all require energy uh, to operate. Most, uh, most treatment processes require energy to operate, and uh, those things play into the overall cost and, and impact of, uh, of how these technologies can be used and whether they're sustainable or not. So as we look at developing water technologies, that is in the first, first forefront of what we should be thinking about is the energy efficiency, the energy usage, what that requires for those technologies to be employed and, and be used in a, in a sustainable manner. So energy is number one priority for most of us on, uh, as we look at developing water technologies because those two are so related. You know, it requires, uh, we would take water to make energy and it takes energy to make water uh, and clean water. So those two are uh, extremely closely related. And Spike, I know you're going to be speaking about IBM's initiative called Smarter Planet. Can you tell us a little bit about that and the technologies that are involved? Okay, so there are many, many facets to the Smarter Planet uh, agenda that IBM is rolling out. Uh, on one end, we have uh, basically uh, the use of information technology to optimize uh, materials and sustainability and water and energy and all of that. On the other end, we have technology development that requires deep skills in material science, nanotechnology, and engineering. And uh, there's a huge bridge between the two that have to be uh, built. And I think the research division is looking at how these technologies based on chemistry and material science can actually impact the agenda of smart plant. So they come in many flavors, water, energy, the two that we just talked about. Traffic is another one. Sustainability in terms of materials is another one. And there are many, many examples of where the present processes are extremely inefficient. There are many ways in which we can bring more efficiency to consumption, and energy use, and water use. And so we're looking at many different technologies to help bridge that gap between hardcore technology and eventual use. Okay. As, as an engineer, um, I noticed that the abstract of your talk mentions effective sensing, data gathering, and analytics. Can you tell us a little bit about that end of it? Yeah, so, so that's the IBM information technology end of it. And so the, so the vision that IBM has is that as you instrument the planet in many different ways, that instrumenting could be sensors, could be RFID tags, it could be cell phones, it could be many different ways in which information is gathered these so-called sensors or instruments are then interconnected through a network and then the amount of data that these networks generate is so large that it requires a lot of skill in analyzing these terabytes of data that's being thrown at us these days. So the whole concept of generating data, analyzing the data to give it actionable intelligence is at the core of the Smart Planet strategy. Okay. And David, another question for you. Where do you see the chemical engineer fitting in to solving these problems? That's a great question. Um, you know, if you look at, at the, the definition of a chemical engineer, we're trained in biology, we're trained in physics, we're trained in, in uh, you know, pumping of fluids a lot of, in a lot of cases, material energy balances, things like that. And all of these uh, aspects of chemical engineering apply to water treatment technologies. If you look at uh, you know, for example, a power plant, they require a lot of water to actually produce the energy and, uh, and electricity that's needed to, to supply a city. And chemical engineers are typically involved in designing those systems, uh, ensuring that, you know, the right material flow balances are there and, and used effectively. So, 
Uh, the chemical engineer is uh, is very versatile at what I say in, in a water treatment uh, system scenario and, and actually designing, operating, and uh, and actually looking at uh, you know to what Spike was mentioning, helping develop some new technologies. Uh, most of us have chemical background, chemistry backgrounds as well, so those things also help uh, help in terms of providing uh, you know new materials, new chemistry that can actually uh, improve the the cost and uh, and energy efficiency of a of a water treatment system. For example. Thank you both. I look forward to hearing your presentations. Thank you very much. Thank you.